Hello everyone. Today in the scheme series, we are learning about National Social Assistance Program. With the name only, it is very clear. National. It means it is applicable across the nation. Social, nothing but it is for the society who are and under society who are the weaker and disadvantaged sections. And assistance means government will give assistance. The assistance could be in the form of monetary. The assistance could be in the form of non-monetary. You can say that assistance could be in the form of cash or in the form of kind. Program is nothing but government initiative. So national social assistance program. Okay, national all over the country. Social means to the society, the weaker sections in it. Assistance, government will give assistance in the form of cash or kind and program. This national social assistance program has been launched by government of India on August 15, 1995. So the details of the scheme is there in the image. Okay, you can pause the video, you can write it. Or else what you can do is, along with my explanation, you can write some important points also. So this particular scheme was launched on August 15, 1995. Basically, this particular scheme is to help those people who are disadvantaged and who are below poverty line population. This is the second point here. Another important point here is last time when we have learned about Manarega, that scheme was applicable only to the rural areas. But National Social Assistance Program is, does not have this kind of regional disparity. So it is a program that is implemented pan-India, nothing but for the rural areas and also for the urban areas, National Social Assistance Programs will be applicable. And in this program, lot of initiatives has been taken by the government of India. This is an umbrella program. You can understand that umbrella schemes are those schemes under which many sub schemes will be there. So National Social Assistance Program, it is an umbrella program. Under it, we also have Indira Gandhi National Old Age Pension Scheme, Indira Gandhi National Widow Pension Scheme, Indira Gandhi National Disabled Pension Scheme, National Family Health Benefit Scheme, and also Annapurna Scheme. All these schemes are there under this particular National Social Assistance Program. That's why this scheme is called as Umbrella Scheme. Okay, so we have learned what is the meaning of NSAP. We have learned few points that this particular program launching date we have learned, August 15, 1995. It is applicable across the India, both in rural and urban areas. Third point that we have learned, it is applicable only to those people who are living below poverty line, whether they are in rural or in urban areas. Okay, fourth point under this program, the benefit is given in the form of cash or kind to the beneficiaries. And this is an umbrella scheme, nothing but it has many schemes under it, which I have told you. Okay, now the number of schemes under it has been what extended in a phase manner. Nothing but in the year 1995, when this scheme was launched, there were ha we were having three schemes only. First one is National Old Age Pension Scheme was there. Then National Family Benefit Scheme was there. National One more important point here. When this scheme was launched, all the sub-schemes has not started at once on August 15, 1995. So when the at the inception of this particular scheme in the year 1995, we had only three schemes. National Old Age Pension Scheme, National Family Benefit Scheme, National Maternity Benefit Scheme. Only three were there. Later on in the year 2000, Anna Purna Scheme has been added to this particular program. Later on in the year 2009, 2009 we got Indira Gandhi Widow Pension Scheme. We got Indira Gandhi Divyanga Disabled Pension Scheme. So all these six sub-schemes are a part of National Social Assistance Program. So I have told you, I have told you to whom it is applicable. I have told you the years of its launch. So basically all the important factual data of this scheme has been told to you. Now, the question here is, this particular scheme has been launched in order to give effect to one of the directive principles of state policy. If you look at closely the right to principle of state policy, which are mentioned in the part fourth of the constitution, you can see article 41 and article, under article 41, you can come across that it is a state responsibility, nothing but the government responsibility in order to provide assistance in case of old age, in case of sickness, in case of disablements and many other areas are given. Let us now learn about the important features of these schemes. All of it, as you are aware of this fact, we are having National Old Age Pension Scheme, 
National Family Benefit Scheme, then we are having National Maternity Benefit Scheme, then Annapurna, then Disabled, then Widow. We are having six. In this, the National Maternity Benefit Scheme has been removed at this point of time. Remember this point. All other five are there, but National Maternity Benefit Scheme has been removed. And because that particular woman related thing has to be taken care of very clearly, that's why that has been a new scheme has been launched for it. Okay, Indra Gandhi Maitritu Sahyog Yojana in the year uh, 2010 October. So that is a scheme for that the a complete wholesome scheme is there. So many features are there to the scheme. So that has been removed. All other schemes are still in intact. Now, if you see the first one, National Old Age Pension Scheme. So from the government, the data is taken from the PIB, whatever I am saying to you. So it is updated uh, 2020 to 2021, PIB updated data, which I am telling to you now. So with regard to old age pension scheme, in our country, the old age people are those people who has crossed 60 years above. And uh, 60 to 80 years, we call them as senior citizen and above 80 years, we call them as very senior citizen. Remember this point. And anyone who is in the age group of 60 to 79 years, and falls under the BPL category, which I don't need to tell you again and again, because I have already told you that all the schemes are applicable to the people who are actually living below poverty line, right? So the, the people who are living below the poverty line and having the age group of 40 to 79 years, the government will give them 200 per month. Remember this point. And this is very important that in all these schemes, there are only two criteria you should know. One is the age group. Another one is the amount dispersed age group and amount is dispersed and the budget in the budget year how much budget is allocated for this particular scheme you should know this much only right so national old age pension scheme is the first scheme we have in these two categories are there one if you are between if you are between 60 to 79 years then you will get 200 per month in your account if you cross 79 years and enters it to 80 or you are above 80 then the government will give you 500 rupees so this is a conditional cash transfer scheme condition means you have to be 60 years that is the condition or you have to be 79 years above or enter into 80 or above that is the condition that's why all of these are conditional transfer scheme whenever we talk about conditional transfer scheme always remember this point we are saying that there should be some conditions that one has to fulfill in order to avail the benefit of the scheme okay right like sarva siksha abhiyan is there sarva siksha abhiyan does not have any conduction if the child is six years old you can get him even I, even Ambani, even you, anyone can put your child in the government school. They will never say no because for the school education, 6 to 14 years is free from the government. It means anyone can be a part of the particular education system. That's why it was an unconditional scheme, Sarva Siksha Abhiyan. Whereas these schemes, whatever we are discussing, these are conditional schemes. So conditional cash transfer scheme, we say. Why? Because we are transferring cash here, right? So if you are between 60 to 79 years, you will get 200 rupees. Okay, if you are above 80 years, you will get 500 rupees. This is all about National Old Age Pension Scheme. Now, National Family Benefit Scheme is also there. Second one. National Family Benefit Scheme is nothing but given to those households in which the breadwinner has expired or died. The one who is like a breadwinner means the father so the father goes out to the market and earns and get the bread for everyone no that's why he was called he's generally called as what breadwinner and today also not only father mother is also a breadwinner whoever is is it uh, that is not important but the if any one of them or in any of them if the breadwinner of the family dies that particular family will be given 20000 rupees of cash transfer okay in order to sustain their family. Suppose the important person, suppose a mother is a housewife and father died all of a sudden. So just imagine the situation of the particular household. Means who should feed them, who should pay the rent, who should pay the electricity, who should pay the fees of the education. So all of a sudden they will be in a problem, right? If anyhow they are very poor, they are going to the government school, right? If they don't have home, they have to pay the rent. So at a time what happens is the woman exploitation will happen. Mother in the need of money in order to survive, in order to make sure that the livelihood of the, in order to make sure that the food security of the children, she goes out to work, she will be exploited. Instead of eight, eight hours of work, 200 is paid, she will pay only 100 rupees. Sexual exploitation of children will also happen. Okay, she needs to start working as a maid, low dignified jobs because she was happily living as a housewife when the, when the husband is earning. Now she has to go with a low dignified job. All the trauma and panic will be there. 
that's why in order to make them okay to balance themselves for some period of time three four months of relief the bread winner if anyone dies the family will be given twenty thousand rupees so old age pension scheme is over family benefit scheme is over now for the people the widows widows should be in the age group of 40 to 79 years 40 to 79 years if anyone is widow the government will give 300 rupees per month okay for disabled people should be in the age group of 18 to 79 18 to 79 any person in the age group of 18 to 79 the government will give them okay 300 rupees the government will give them 300 rupees. for widows and the divyang nothing but disabled 300 rupees is given remember this point now just say that sir what they will do like divyang is given from 18 to 79 years they will get uh, 300 rupees but if the divyang enters into 80 years then what will happen sir so at that time how he should live that is also a question so the question is very right when the moment he enters into 80 no that 80 old age pension scheme will be applicable to him old age pension scheme will be applicable to him so whenever anyone crosses 60 or 80 that scheme will come into picture and the last scheme that we have to discuss is Annapurna scheme still running scheme as you know that it has been launched later on in the year 2000 under Annapurna scheme the poorest of poor people the poorest of people who does not have any shelter who are just sleeping on the roads sleeping on the footpaths unhygienic and sleeping across garbage and have the torn clothes etc so and so forth so those under completely underprivileged people okay who don't uh, were not even cared by the society at large okay, for them annapurna scheme has been launched under this scheme every identified beneficiary will be given 10 kg of rice okay 10 kg of rice fine just a second yes 10 kg of food grains per month free of cost to the beneficiary not even one rupee go to the ration card uh, ration shop show the annapurna card he will give you a 10 kg of rice bag now the question here again important is if he is so underprivileged he is so and uh, like he is sleeping on the footpaths how he should cook this is the very biggest thing so what i really feel is that uh, my uh, uh, suggestion to the government will be very simple like how you have the Anganwadi centers in each and every rural areas, urban areas. In the same way, government should also convert this Annapurna scheme into Annapurna homes. Okay, if Annapurna scheme is converted and instead of giving the rice, Annapurna homes are there. Okay, they should be getting what packaged food every day. They should go in every locality. Okay, the number of cards should be issued. They see the card and give a packet of food. Okay, give the evening food, give the day food. Now the question here again comes that if they are giving evening food, no, they may eat the same in the, uh, like in the lunch also or they may give it to or sell it to somebody else. All this government also have to look into. But the important point here is they should instead of giving the rice, they should be given food grains, they should be given what cooked food. Okay, Annapurna homes has to be created in order to cater to because this is a scheme that is actually there on the grounds, ground level. So there are some schemes, right? Uh, it's very important the government should understand that there are some schemes which has to be implemented at ground level. Everything cannot be toppled, top down from the bottom. Okay, top to the bottom. But this kind of trickle down theory will not work for all the uh, uh, all the issues. So there are some issues that has to be uh, what uh, tackled at the ground level. So I believe that the people who are living on the footpaths, sleeping on the footpaths, and they don't have proper clothes, completely unhygienic is there for them. If you do at the ground level, that is more important. So that's all about all the schemes, the details of this scheme. Anyhow, they're in the uh, picture beside and make sure that you uh, revise the series of current affairs and do join uh, in the courses and also make sure that uh, you follow my videos regularly and share it to all of your friends. Thank you.